Okay, I'm going to show you a little more fleshed out version of driving an InDesign file with StatCrew XMLs. So I've created this document and I've assigned everything and I'll kind of show you that in a minute. But uh, here's everything and I'm going to load uh, an XML from another game. It's just a game XML. Um, right here, uh, apply XSLT. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute too. Uh, that's what kind of shifts and changes the stat crew XML file into something that's a little more usable for InDesign. So we'll click OK. And there you go. Everything's populated for that game. The scores uh, by periods, all the stats, uh, the photos change. Basically these, uh, and I'll talk about this in a minute, but these are... Um, the players listed basically by points. So this is the top, the first four players listed by points. Um, you could you could list it by anything you want, but uh, for me that was just a quick and easy thing to do. Um, so pretty easy, uh, pretty easy to update. Uh, actually, getting things set up is a little time consuming. Uh, I'm the kind of person that is willing to spend four hours to make a 15-minute task take 10 minutes. So that's just kind of how I work, um, but. Uh, it's a pretty neat thing, and you can kind of extrapolate and see uh, how much more you could kind of do with this. Uh, so let's uh, dig a little bit deeper. Um, the first thing uh, I want to talk about is the XSLT, and I will show you that. I'll drag this over. Okay. So this is the XSLT, um, and what this is actually doing is this is telling the XML file to basically change itself around in, into uh, something that that is more usable to us. Um, as some of you saw in, the, in uh, my first version of this, uh, InDesign doesn't deal with attributes very well. So in an XML file, it's this. Uh, these are all attributes as to, uh, opposed to being nodes, and so. Um, that's one thing we have to change. Uh, the other thing is it's not sorted by any particular um, method. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort players by total points. And this is what allows me to get those top four points. Um, and I, I'm not going to go into the details of all this because it's pretty complex. But um, I'll make this, this file available. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to convert um, some of the nodes into image links. Um, that's what allows me to update those images dynamically. Um, so basically what I'm doing is taking advantage in the XML, um, for the players anyways, this code right here um, is kind of uh, is a field that, uh, that we don't use. It's basically a duplicate of um, uni. Uh, I think the only time it would actually be different is maybe for football when you had duplicate numbers. So we don't use this. So what I'm going to do is basically convert that into a link. And so um, this right here you would have to change to a folder on your computer where your images were. Um, and so what it's going to do is it's, you know, C users desktop XML. Um, this dot right here is what's going to be the code dot JPEG. So if I go into that folder, you can see that I've got my images um, just by their, by their numbers. And so that will pull them in. What this also does is it will change the code in the XML for the teams. Um, so, and and what that that's basically is the RPI code. And again, we don't need the RPI code, so we'll take advantage of that and use that to convert that to a link for a team image. So, as you can see, 785 is the RPI code, and 785 is that image. So you have to do, to work with the images, you kind of have to do a little work and get things set up um, beforehand. But, you know, at the beginning of the season, you could set your all your team players. Um, you could go and get all your the teams you're going to play and set those all up. And then just after the game, you run your XML and it's done. Um, so let me show you a little bit more about then how we adjust things. So if if you're not seeing this and you're probably not this this is our this is our XML structure um, so we want to go to view structure 
and mine says hide, but yours would say show. So we want to show the XML structure. And that's how we get this right here. Um, and then we want to click, yours will be empty. We want to click this button right up here and import XML. And we'll go to get back to game five. And basically the only thing I have checked here is the apply XSLT and you're going to click on that and browse for that XSLT file so that it will shift things around. And so if we get into this structure right here, uh, you can see um, we have two teams. Uh, the first team is uh, the away team and the second team is the home team. Um, and so under team, you can see image that that code that was formerly the RPI code has now been converted into a link to the RPI code.jpg. Um, and so we've got all our XML stuff in here in, in a way that we can access it. Um, if we want to add something, um, so let's let's add some let's add another We'll add another another set of stats. So I want to come into teams and then totals. Let's go special. Let's uh, let's go leads. We'll change it to leads. So now we've got a spot to put the leads. Um, and uh, one thing that will make this a, a lot easier is if you use styles to organize everything. Because I've, I've, I've got it all cleaned. It looks nice. But when I drag this over here, it's, the styles are going to go away. So let's go. We want to go to leads. I'm just going to click this leads right here and drag it right onto that box. And it pops in two. Um, as you can see, like I just said, the style goes away. So I'm going to... Well, actually, what I'll do is I'll go back and do the other teams. Totals, special, leads. Drop that in. And then I'll just select both those boxes. Actually, it won't let me do that for some reason. Uh, and then go into paragraph styles. And I have that is a team stat. And that is a team stat. And there we go. And so now those those leads will uh, adjust based on uh, the XML file back there and there we go and those leads updated right there so setting this all up is it took a while um, Part of the problem is is having each uh, element in its own text container it takes a little longer, um, but it, like I said, once it's set up, it updates pretty easily. So that's it.